All righty, Brian. We're, we're here. in it. We're in another uh, wait, super duty, heavy wait, duty, wait, wait. big truck. What are you wearing? It was a brodozer, right? No, no, it's a trucker. Is that a trucker or a brodozer hat? Brodozer. This is, is this a brodozer? This is not a brodozer. No. Okay. Although they make a brodozer. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. Wait a minute. What are you wearing? You told me to get a power stroke in a previous episode of Break Check. You said, no. get a power stroke. No, no, no. We're, you said we're, we're in driving? the Ram. It's got a Cummins. You said we're in a heavy duty diesel. I assume there's a power stroke. No, that was something else. That was wrong episode. Fine. Wrong episode. Fine. Okay. Okay. So, for what real. are we in? What are we in? 2020 Ram, not a Dodge. Yes, I changed I mix, that. I mix it up all the time. This is not a Dodge. This is a Ram 2500 Laramie Crew Cab 4x4 Cummins Turbo Diesel. Sport. Sport. Yes. So, four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. But and it doesn't have red tow hooks. Or uh, locking diffs. Which I find is interesting. Do you need locking diffs, really? You know, most people need I, locking I diffs. I think on pavement, it's way overkill. In this truck, you're not rock crawling anyways. No. It wouldn't keep me from buying it, put it that way. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. And by the way, any off-road I've ever done, I'd have been fine with the open disc. Yeah, exactly. So, not a problem. Exactly. Okay, so what makes this truck so special? Um, two things. Well, three things. Coil springs. Yep. Cummins diesel. Yep. And the interior in general. Oh, man. What a great place to spend time. I cannot believe this is a truck. Trucks have come a long way. Man, yeah. This is a luxury car. Completely, yeah. <laughs> Very well thought out. Oh, Trump flight, Craig. All right. <laughs> Brake check. <laughs> $75,000. $75,000. Now, mind you, that's just what trucks run these days. It is. This is, I mean, you get a Chevy, a GMC, a Ford, any of these heavy duty trucks loaded up like this, that's just what they cost. Well, and if you get this and not the Laramie nice trim level, it's going to be mid to high 50s, just yeah, like yeah. the 250 uh, Godzilla was. Right, exactly. This is better compared to the trim level we've already reviewed. Right. Um, check out the link here. This would be comfortable to the Lariat Ford trim level. Okay. Okay. Why are there so many tr truck flags? While we're talking for a second, this is a PSA to anyone who thinks they are um, being yeah. cute by having truck flags. Problem with Truck the... flags are not cute. They look stupid and make you look like an True. Confirm. Oh, there's another one. Another one. So, what's on the exterior? Okay, exterior, what do you think? Um, you know, I've, I've been on the fence about Ram for a while. I feel like they're a little too chintzy. Um, but this one doesn't bother me at all. I think it looks good. What do you think? I like it. What do you uh, What do you think about that big ram nose up front? That's the part that gets me. I'm not, I wish it wasn't chrome, I guess. Okay. Which isn't really a fault. It's a matter of taste. I don't prefer it. But right. uh, I, I do think the Fords look a little better. You like the styling of the exterior of the Ford a little better? Just a subjective styling comment. Now, yes. out of the big three, what compared to the Chevy and the GMC? The Chevy looks like... Uh, <laughs> mm, you like it better than that? I like it better than so that. You, okay, yes. you put this in the middle in out the of middle. all the yep. Super Duties. I'll put it just under the Fords. Okay. I I think it looks good. So, you know, we pulled up to it earlier. Yep. We had a park ready to go do something. We came back. And it looks good. It's not, to me, it's not too bold. It's not too bro dozer -y like we exactly. talked, kind of yeah. made fun of earlier. The trimmer looks a little bro dozer -y Yeah, because it, of its it package, is, which is but, nothing wrong with that, but that's just what it is. Yeah. But it, I think this looks a little understated, but trucky, but not too in-your-facey. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect right. sense. Like, you could pull up to church in this, you could pull up to work in this, and you don't look ridiculous. You're not going to offend too many people driving no, this. No, you're not. Oh, man, did you feel that? Barely. Exactly. What was that? Was that a railroad track? That was coil rear suspension, but that Couldn't is. Couldn't tell. Interior. What do you think about the interior? Oh, my goodness. <whistles> Have they left... Look, <laughs> I've been very upset lately driving some Fords, because um, I know they can do better oh, oh. at that price point. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. There's been so much time and attention put into the detail here. Yeah. The toggles down low, the yeah. Tesla style, yeah. um, you know, screen that is really intuitive. But you still have physical buttons. You do. It's not just a screen. It's not fumbly. It works really well. It's not laggy. You have climate buttons. You have audio buttons. But you still have the touchscreen to get to all the intricate yeah. things. And the stitching is really nice. Yeah. I don't know. I think they're doing a great job on this. The center console is really cool. Center console is very functional. You can move the cup holders and everything. You have yeah. a big storage space. You've got geometric things in here. Do you know yeah. why this exists? Uh, because we're all idiots and don't know what any of that means. No, wrong answer. Oh. This exists oh, okay. because in the cast for this piece in manufacturing had a center point right here to line it up. Okay. And the designers thought that was silly. So they drew all this geometric things, things around it to hide that little dot in the middle. I think okay. it's hysterical. It's I great. I believe you. Um, USB ports here. USB ports Everywhere. all over the place in the front, in the back, in the middle. 
you've got a USB port anywhere. I really do think, and you have USB and USB-C, I do think that the interior of this thing is the overall highlight. Okay, and this is where we got to give Ram credit, I think, because some people do dog, dog Ram for, everybody dogs every truck for everything. Sure, everyone's All of, got their, their, their every, Yeah, everybody's yeah. got somebody they like the bag on, everybody they like the, you know, dote on. So, here's where Ram needs to get credit and deserves credit. They, the engineers and that company, FCA, invested money in the interior yes. on purpose well well ahead of GM and Ford and it's paying off it's paying off the interior sure. yeah. is unbelievable in here it is comfortable it is luxurious it's just straight up luxurious it's great yeah it's wonderful and uh, this they have the Uniconnect's been the best for a while it still it's is still the best yeah um, you can just you can configure this truck and the settings exactly the way you want it. Which is something you and I talk about all the time. We want to be able to, you know, modern cars have a CAN bus system where you can configure things. Give us the user the ability to do that. Mopar has done that here. Yes, and it's frustrating because in the newer cars, you have all this programmable stuff. You can change the digital display to whatever you want. Sure. Let us make it whatever we want. Yeah. They're pretty good about that. So one of the things I love in the instrument panel is you got four little corners. You, right now it's a compass, temperature gauge. You, you can choose which whatever gauges you want, you want in yeah. there. I love that. Yep. The only thing you can't do in this entire gauge, which is a little weird and I don't understand, you can't get the oil temp anywhere unless you get the screen that just shows everything all at once. Hmm, that's interesting. You can't isolate oil temp. You would think in something you're going to tow with so much, that would be... You can get transmission temp, you can yeah. get oil pressure, all that business, coolant. You know what it is? It's a Cummins. It'll never have a problem. Could be. That's why they're telling you not to worry about it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, love it. Love it. It's great. Good place to sit. We, we switched. We switched. We just have our dynamics. Let's get it. Hit it. RPM. <laughs> High revving. Okay, well. Not bad. Not bad. For a house, some, not bad some, at all. <laughs> right. For a rolling house, not bad. <laughs> so it's got some power. It does. It does have less power than the Power Stroke we drove recently. How much power does it have? 370 horse, mm -hmm. 850 torque. How many gears does it have? Six, which is the correct amount. So that's okay. Yeah, it's perfect. I thought more better. Mm hmm. Not always? I'll counter that argument. Hmm. But more not necessarily bad. No, not necessarily. But six works. Six is plenty. I never think, man, I wish this had four more gears. Okay. It hasn't crossed my mind once driving this ride. All right, so dynamics of intended purpose. Please yes. explain, sir. Dynamics of intended purpose um, often gets misunderstood by some of our viewers. Mm -hmm. What that means is we are not going to review a sports car and compare it to a heavy-duty truck. So if you say this thing handles good, it doesn't mean that... It handles like a Miata. It handles like a truck, but it handles good for a truck. In comparison to its competition. Right. And if okay. we say a Miata is comfortable, we don't mean it's as comfy as this. Okay. But it's comfy for what it is. Right. Right. That makes sense. Got it. So, so, the dynamics of this particular vehicle, please tell. This vehicle rides way better than it has any right to. Uh, I totally agree with that. We've driven heavy duty trucks over the years plenty. We've mm -hmm. driven new ones, current ones. Yep. New ones, and old ones. When I drive this, I go, this it is inexcusable for its competition to not ride at least close to this. If this is this good. Uh, they've got them beat, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll say that I agree. I Heavy duty trucks historically annoy both of us. Sure. Because they just beat you up well, without this, a load. In fairness, it's because they have to get those high tow numbers. Right. right? And that's what everyone's chasing. Sure. But I would argue that the majority of the heavy duty truck market at least the consumer grade, they're not towing every day. Right. So then you have this huge trade-off. Right. This is a truck that if you want the big truck feel and ride and you mm -hmm. tow monthly, mm -hmm. you're not getting beat up the other 29 days of the month. Right. So this strikes a good compromise, a good balance. It rides well loaded and unloaded. Yes. Can do both. That's really hard to do. It pulls it off. It does. Let's so, talk powertrain. Okay. This has the Cummins, baby. Oh, yeah. You have told me previously. Get a power strip. No, no. No, get don't a get Cummins a, on get this a Cummins. Get yeah. a Cummins. This is the only Cummins. Okay. This does make less power than the Power Stroke. Power yes. Stroke makes, was it 475 horse, which is a ton. Well, that's why it's not a Power Cummins. It's just a Cummins. <laughs> right. <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> and it makes 1,050 pounds of torque. Right. I will tell you, this does not feel slower on the seat of the pants to me. I know that it is. They do make a high output option. They do. Option. On the 3,500 up configuration. Okay. Right. But for the 2,500, this is the engine you can get. Okay. Or... The gas, what's the gas? Well, the gas 64 Hemi. Okay. Which is awesome, the 392. Yeah. Um, I will say, in the gas world, I like the Godzilla Ford better. Yes. It seems more fitting to me, has more mm -hmm. torque low end. 
than the 6.4 does. I prefer the Cummins over the Power Stroke because it has a little more personality. Hmm. Interesting. It, the Power Stroke feels like a science experiment. You open the hood and it's just like, what yes. is happening here? Yeah, this is this is pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. For what it is. Yeah. Now, this is a $9,300 option, the Cummins. It's a lot. Yeah. Worth it? Again, same answer that we had in the Ford. What are you going to use it for? Yeah. So if you do tow, and I made this argument before, if you tow weekly or daily, mm-hmm. you really need to take a hard look at the diesel. If you yes. tow monthly or less, you're probably wasting your time. It depends how far you're going, too. True. But if you're just doing like around town with a boat or something, just deal with the and, gas. And I think one thing we should clear up on the, our gas versus diesel thing, we're not saying we don't like diesel. I am. Well, yeah, okay. I'm okay, saying, I'm you saying, are. I'm saying for all for those me, that hate diesel, uh, that don't like the diesel haters, it's this guy. It's me, Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it's not for me. That's all I'm getting at. I guess the point we're trying to make, it's it's an expensive option. All brands is an eight to ten thousand dollar yeah. option. Yeah. They are all unbelievably incredible and oh, will they're, tow they're awesome. anything. Yeah. But um, it's not necessary for a lot of the buyers that buy them. You will always you will see a lot of people always argue, well, but the diesel gets better gas gets better fuel mileage, okay? Yeah, but diesel fuel costs more than gasoline. And so that's it just it's almost, the counterpoint to me, I agree. Yeah. Exactly. I've is, owned diesels, I've gone down this road before. You have to, it, there's a trade-off. Right. And so, so just be honest with yeah. yourself about what you're using it for. That's if you what are we're towing, saying. I can look, the diesel option to me is either the best or worst choice you can make when picking a pickup. Right. If you tow routinely, it's the best thing you can do. Get it. Get it. No question. Duramax, yeah. Power Stroke, yeah. Cummins, they're all wonderful. Yeah. If you don't, don't kid yourself. Just get the gas. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. It's gonna be simpler. Right. It's there's just... less maintenance, it doesn't stink when you fill it fill it up, there's yeah. no death fluid and all that kind of crap. Yeah. So there is that. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. I think it's time for hipster score. Hipster score. Three, two, one. Three. Three. What? What is wrong with you? Why are you getting mine? First, right you couldn't get any of them right. <laughs> now you're just copying me all the time. No, no. I figured no. it out. No, I just I've had it right the whole time. You're catching. Okay, up. look, I'm going to explain why I got a three, and you're not going to interrupt me like this okay. time like you do on all the others. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen. It gets a three because it gets Apple CarPlay number one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I agree. Two, you can go overlanding or adventuring in this. Absolutely. Hipsters like that, or at least that is. A lot better than you can in a crossover. Yes. Third, if you are forced to ride in this as a hipster in somebody's big off-road heavy-duty diesel truck, at least it rides well and doesn't know you. Yeah, it's not as offensive. Yeah. That's a pretty good point. So, I think that's the perfect rating. You're I'm, welcome. I'm going to differ a little bit. Okay. One, for Apple CarPlay. Yes. Two, for the overland ability. Mm-hmm. So, we're in agreement there. One half of a point Ooh. for the column mounted shifter. Oh, yeah, and that's okay, good point. That to me, we've talked about rotary, rotor dials and all kind of stuff. This is like heavy duty should have that. What about that column though? It's just a straight stick. What do you think? Yeah, about this that? is kind of weird, and it doesn't it doesn't go up and down, it twists up and yeah, down, which is kinda of odd. That's fine. But I'm works. just glad it's okay. there. Yeah. All right. And the other half is because it rides so well. It does man, it does ride well. Yeah. That's so really to your good. point of it not being offensive when you're riding it. Okay. So that leaves one thing. One thing. Who's this car for? This is for pop pop. Okay. Just yep. like we said earlier, yep. this is for the... Uh, well, we said it earlier, but your microphone was off. Well, that's true. <laughs> this but go for, ahead. This is for Pop Pop. And what I mean is the gentleman that does tow routinely, mm-hmm. or has a business, or mm-hmm. has land, and maybe he's over... Or he has a payload. Or, or payload, yep. or whatever. Yep. But he still needs to take his wife to church on Sunday. Yep. And doesn't want to spill her coffee or his and knock their teeth out. It is, this does a better job of that than the others do. Look, you can have a coffee cup in this without the lid. And not be spill fine. it. There's not very many heavy-duty trucks. You half tons struggle with that. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. This is impressive. Very impressive. This is, yeah, very good. I, I am literally blown away. And I've driven the half-ton version of this, too. It rides great as well. But I expected this to ride rough, and it doesn't. Well, I'd, I'd completely agree with you. Here's what I would add to this. This car is for those that are clamoring for Lexus to build a heavy-duty truck. <laughs> this you, is the truck. Oh, so it's for you. This is a Lexus heavy-duty truck is what this is. Well, and they don't make one, so here it is. It's quiet, well, well, it's comfortable, why are you, why it's are you luxurious. Thinking, what's your basis behind that? Why do you think it's it's the quiet? Is that it? It's all the things I'm saying, if you would listen. Oh, okay. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's luxurious, it's reliable. That's what a Lexus is. Reliable because of the Cummins part? Yes. Mm, it is, that's true. Yep. Tried and true. So there you go. All right. And with that, thanks for watching Brake Check. Hope you enjoyed this uh, review of our heavy duty. If you haven't watched our F-250, Godzilla, and Trimmer reviews, check those out. Yep. And let us know what you think. Is this the Lexus of trucks? I don't know about that. Let us know what you think. If you're in the heavy-duty market, did you look at this? What did you compare it to? Did you get the 6.4? Did you get the 6.7? What's what's good for you? Do you like the ride of this? Do you not like the ride of this? 
owners well. chime in that have had this. If you had any liability problems. What kind of gas mileage have you been getting? We've been Ooh. getting 14.8. That's not bad. Driving around town, messing around a little bit, a little, stop and go, no highway. Monkey. Yeah. Now we don't have tr uh, truck flags on. That would probably hurt it. Mm, yeah, a flag yeah. would help. Yeah. yeah. We should mm. probably get a flag. Probably get a flag. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.